Hi everyone, it's Teresa from Slow Paths Wellness and this is a new feature, feature I'm adding called Functional Fridays. Now, this one may not be a weekly feature yet because it takes a little bit more time to put together because functional medicine is uh, very modern. A lot of times the new studies and the new information that comes out, I need to take the time to update myself on it each time I do a um, video. Whereas with Chinese medicine, most everything has been at been around for a few thousand years and I've been using it for a couple decades so it's kind of easier to do it a little bit more off the cuff without a whole lot of extra um, preparation. But functional Fridays are for functional medicine and each time we, I come, each time I see you we're going to talk about some aspect either of functional medicine or specific conditions and how functional medicine would approach them. And I'm going to try to keep the, the time down to about the same as the Mindful Mondays or the Wellness Wednesdays. Um, but if you have any questions, you can always go to my website, slowpathswellness.com, fill out the contact form, and ask me whatever you want. Now, I am not able to provide medical advice through um, email. That's a, a different thing from being in a proper uh, practitioner-patient relationship. But I can give you general principles and general information and point you to more uh, sources of information if you need it. So for today, functional medicine, what is it? Um, Functional medicine is a fairly modern system of medicine. It's been around as a functional medicine. Now, this, the theories have been around in other forms um, for much longer than that. In fact, thousands of years, literally. But functional medicine as something that is called functional medicine and is practiced more or less as it is right now, has been around since around, say, the 80s, maybe a little bit before that. Um, and it borrows a lot from naturopathy, which has been around a little longer, probably maybe the 1800s, something like that. I uh, may not be exactly right on the detail with that, but something around that area. And it is sometimes called a new concept in medicine because it takes modern medicine practitioners like MDs and nurse practitioners and registered dietitians, and it has them look at the body and look at health as a set of systems that work together as a whole so that you don't, you don't necessarily break out everything into this is the cardio system, this is the... Um, the gastrointestinal system, this is the endocrine system, and this is specifically the reproductive system. You try to look, you understand all those different systems, but you see them as working together so that if you do something with one of them, all of them are affected. And so you try to work with the overall um, balance of the body more than focusing in just on one system. As an acupuncturist, as an Asian health practitioner, it is sometimes a little bit frustrating hearing them go on and on and on about this new health system because I know this is a health way of, way of looking at health that's been around for thousands of years, very literally. It's in Asian medicine, it's in Ayurvedic, which I guess can be considered part of Asian medicine. Um, it's in just about every natural healing system that's been around for, for centuries. And to see people say, oh, this is new. No, it's not new. It's just me putting modern treatment methods with the ancient ideas about health. So one of the things that people tend to hear a lot about in um, functional medicine is the idea of testing. Functional medicine practitioners typically use a lot of lab tests because it gives us information that helps us to be able to figure out which systems of the body might be out of balance. And we also typically use lab tests that may be different from what your standard conventional doctor would use, or if they are the same tests, we may have a different range of what we consider optimal as opposed to normal, because as, I heard, as I've heard it explained, a conventional doctor tests to make sure you don't have something that will kill you or that needs an immediate addressing so that you don't become in danger of dying from it. Whereas a functional medicine doctor looks to make sure that things are working as they at the best that they possibly can so that you can get healthier and healthier and healthier. So instead of trying to um, stop mistakes or something that's already showing up as a pretty bad mistake but you don't have desperate symptoms yet trying to keep it from getting worse, the ideal is we catch things before they even start showing symptoms, or if they are showing symptoms, we're able to back it up much more quickly because we're taking that overall broad um, outlook as to what's going on. Now, as anyone who's looked into functional medicine will tell you, a lot of these tests can be very, very, very expensive. It's nothing at all to have a test. Now, a lot of times these are tests that have um, 
multiple tests within it. So it'll be one blood draw, but you'll get multiple inf pieces of information from it. But it's very common for them to cost 300, 500, 400, 700. I know um, some people, uh, some practitioners require as you're beginning to come into, even to come into their office, to do about $1,500 worth of testing because it gives them a whole lot of information to put together before you come in or after your first visit so that they're able to really put together a treatment plan right away. So if you're somebody who either likes to do things yourself, likes to take care of things yourself, and doesn't necessarily want to take, a, again, an extra expense of you know 15 or 20 supplements, or if you just don't have the money in your budget to drop $1,500 in order to, no matter what the great information is that you'll get, and of course, a lot of functional medicine is not covered by insurance because it is a different system and the insurance tends to be more about taking care of problems that already exist instead of trying to head off problems that might come up in the future. So what do you do? Is functional medicine just not for you? I don't think that's the case at all because functional medicine's broad overview is that, you're, again, your body is a system. And if you put your system in order properly, better health will result. Now, not always a cure. There's some things we can't cure. There's some things that the things that would happen be need, need to happen in order for that cure to happen might be not be impossible or very, very, very difficult. But as one of my functional medicine teachers said, there's a difference between health and between disease, uh, lack of disease and wellness, that sometimes you can be healthy and you can be well, even if you have a chronic illness because you feel empowered in how you manage it and you're able to deal with the symptoms of it even if you never get rid of the illness itself. And that's been a lot of my approach even before I looked at functional medicine as an Asian medicine practitioner because if you have someone come in with a chronic health problem, sometimes acupuncture and herbs just make it go away. And that's what we really love and it happens often enough that it's always something that I tell someone this is a possibility no matter what's going on well, almost never. There are a couple of things that, you know, if you have a genetic um, illness, an illness based on your genetics, and it's not an epigenetic illness, it's actually genetic, you know, you're like, you can't reverse that. But you can manage it really well, and you can make that management allow you to have a more joyful life than if you're constantly chasing around symptoms that you may be able to do something about. So I believe, and I teach people, that there are lots of things you can do yourself that either cost nothing or cost very little in order to make your health better. And I try to put as many of those as possible on my website because I know everyone can't afford to come see me, everyone can't afford to get all these tests done, and I don't want that to be the reason that you don't have good health. I love seeing people. I feel like I really give a great deal for the visits when people come to see me, and I do a very thorough job of helping people. But if that's not something you can do right now, here are some things that you can do to help yourself. It's basically common sense. Your body systems need good nutrition. They need to be in a safe and feel there in a safe environment so that your nervous system is calm because that's when it does all the house cleaning and maintenance and getting all the nutrients from food that it needs. It needs adequate rest so that you're able to, uh, it's able to do again the house cleaning things because an awful lot of stuff happens when you sleep and we'll have a whole episode of Functional Friday on sleep, on digestion, on each one of these factors. But we're gonna do a broad thing for right now. You need to be able to move around a little bit um, and just, you know, kind of common sense ideas. You don't want to be taking in a lot of stuff either through your mouth or through body products that aren't good for you. So basically, diet. As I believe it was Mark Bittman, he's a chef who has a, had a cookbook. I think he said as far as what you should eat, things that are as natural as possible, mostly vegetables. So eat a lot of vegetables, eat a lot of fruit. If you eat meat, try to eat the healthiest form of meat that you possibly can. You know, get, use a little less and get the grass fed. Use a little less and get the free range eggs. Um, if you can't afford wild so, so, sockeye salmon, then get um, things like wild caught mackerel or wild caught, caught sardines, which being a smaller fish will have less chance of mercury toxin, which is one of the things you're concerned, we're concerned about with fish. Um, for rest, make sure you make enough time to rest. And if you find that you're not able to rest as well as you would like, then look up some information on sleep hygiene. It's all over the internet. Google sleep hygiene, look on this website. 
Um, and do those things. Do the things like cutting off your electronics early so that your body isn't getting that blue light that tells it to stay awake. Um, make sure that you don't do anything really uh, emotionally or visually stimulating just before you go to bed, like watch the, the news <laughs> or watch a violent movie or something like that. Uh, give yourself enough time between your last meal and sleep so that your body's not actively trying to digest this big chunk of food while you're also trying to sleep. Make your uh, sleep environment comfortable for you. Make sure that it's as dark as you can make it or get an eye mask to make that work a little better. Um, then there's also exercise, moving around. Now, depending on your particular health, I know um, sometimes when I talk to people who've had very Ill severe chronic illnesses, such as dealing with um, fluoroquinolone toxicity, which is a reaction to antibiotics, uh, the, the fluoroquinolone antibiotics, ciprofloxacin, things like that, that sometimes literally their exercise is sitting up in the bed because they're in, in such, uh, their energy levels are so low. Well, that's fine. If that's what you can do, sit up in the bed. If you can't do a whole lot more than that, then, you know, move your head. Or if moving your head gives you vertigo, then do finger exercises. Anything you're doing is a movement in the right direction. It's helping to move blood a little bit more. It's helping to keep your range of motion as much as you possibly can. It's helping to move lymphatic fluid, which helps your body get rid of toxins that it needs to get rid of. So exercise is do what you can without overdoing it and without hurting yourself. And of course, if you have a very a chronic illness or something where exercise could be dangerous, do check in with your doctor. Check in with your regular healthcare practitioner to make sure that it's safe. Um, sorry, I have my notes here. And then your mind-body connection. That's something I focus on a great deal because I know how important it is in my own, from my own life experience. So that's basically doing things that help you get out of concentrating just on this part, the cognitive things where you tend to where worry and anxiety and things tend to come up when they're left to themselves, and getting into your body. So actually feeling stuff, feeling emotions, even when they're unpleasant, because that allows your body to process them and move beyond them. Um, feeling sense things, hearing, see what's out there, what you actually hear. Just focus on that instead of having it be background all the time. Seeing what you see out there, notice the colors, and especially notice the things that you like about them. If you see a color and you go, wow, that's just a really bright red, I really like that, then allow your nervous system to feel that. Taste, when you taste something, you know, don't try to do uh, a lot of work while you're eating. Allow your body to enjoy those tastes because in addition to the enjoyment you get from it, it actually changes your digestive system when you're actually really focusing on a food, really tasting it, really taking the time to chew it up. You make more digestive chemicals. You'll digest your food better and your body isn't spending all of its energy keeping this thinking brain going. It's able to put that into your stomach so that you're able to expend the energy you need to to break your food down. Um, so then um, you can also do mindfulness practice. I have things on here from Mindful Monday. If you look in my videos under Mindful Mondays, um, you'll find lots of uh, both exercises and things talking about Mindful Monday. You can also use free apps like Insight Timer or Calm or just look up mindfulness practice on YouTube. Look up Rick Hansen and Savoring because that's one of my favorite things is in addition to just being kind of new in a neutral sense mindful of things, you know, this is a the pressure of my fingers on an armrest. You also want to say to find the things you like and really just kind of wallow in them. Say, okay, I, I really like the smoothness of this table, or I really like the way this, this material feels, and I'm going to focus on it for a minute. Because when you focus on the positive like that, your brain is able to weight things differently because our natural tendency, it's a survival mechanism, our natural tendency is to weight the negative things more heavily because we're trying to look out for ourselves and not and deal with threats. But when we have so many things taking our attention, trying to distract us, trying to grab our attention, then we end up becoming overwhelmed by this threat feeling and it becomes very hard to go through our life without seeing everything as a possible threat, which is where a lot of anxiety comes from. So just taking time to look at the positive things, notice them, experience them. I think that's very, very important. Lots of people talk about gratitude journals. Well, if you write down, I'm grateful for this and grateful for this and grateful for this, you might 
get some of the benefit, but if you write, you know, I'm grateful for the sunshine today, which we don't have any of that today, but I'm grateful for sunshine today, then if you, instead of just writing it down, if you stop and you imagine, or if you're in the sun, you feel it, the sun warming your skin, and how it makes cool patterns on the ground with the shade, then you're really experiencing it. And it allows your nervous system to come down on its threat response idea because it, it realizes if you have time to enjoy things, life can't be too bad. And now, all of these different things, they won't necessarily address every problem that you have. And this has been a real zoom, quick uh, explanation of the different things. And like I said, for later videos, we'll talk about each individual thing because I really want Functional Fridays to be more about what you can do for yourself. And then if you feel you want more help, then you can always contact me and we can talk about what functional medicine does when it is um, sort of helped by having an expert practitioner helping you with it. Um, but so none of the, some of these things won't necessarily cure a condition, but it will get your body processes to start working more in balance with each other. And sometimes that is actually enough to cure things. Um, I know many, many people with anxiety, with um, IBS, with uh, menstrual problems, that just when they came to see me, I didn't do an awful lot other than help them with this information. We did a little acupuncture, little herbs, might have done a supplement or two, but what they found that really made the difference was just incorporating self-care and self-compassion into their life and be doing the things with food, diet, with diet, exercise, rest, mind, body, that help their, their bodies function better. And it did, in those cases, literally cure their condition. But even if it doesn't cure it, you will be working better. Your systems will be working better. And that way, any other intervention you do will help. I know in my cancer journey, when I was getting chemo um, for uh, uterine cancer, the things that I read said that the people who do best through treatment are the people who have those parts of their life right. If you're overall eating well, if you're overall getting the exercise that you can do while you're in this situation, if you're trying to handle stress, you have a much better chance of doing well in your treatment for cancer, of all things, than if you don't. And so if it'll help that, say ditto for diabetics, for heart disease, for um, Parkinson's, basically any, any illness, if you're taking care of these things, even if you still have the illness and you still have symptoms, they will be better because you do these things than they would be otherwise. So there's the basics. Functional medicine sees your body as a system. Even though we are greatly helped by using lab tests and by using pr uh, professional practitioners who know how to put things together and help you with a treatment plan or an elimination diet or all these different things that can help, if you aren't ready to commit to that or you aren't uh, financially able to at this time, then there's tons of things you can do for yourself and many of them will, will take care of problems even if you never see a trained functional medicine practitioner. And those include healthy diet, healthy rest, healthy exercise, healthy mind-body connection, and I didn't talk about this but it'll be part of another functional medicine thing, healthy connections. Having friendships with people who make you feel good most of the time, where you're able to work together and you kind of see things from a similar value standpoint, and you're able to really work together when there, when a problem comes up, you're able to practice uh, conflict resolution and things work out really well. So this has been the very first Functional Friday. I may have talked a little bit too fast because I was trying to get a whole lot in there. Uh, feel free to share this video and uh, subscribe to the video, leave a uh, comment for me and I'll be looking at those because this is a new future feature and I'll be trying to, to um, make it what you guys want because that's what I want to do. This is my way of reaching out to people who may not be in a position, they may not be close to my office so we'd have to do everything remotely or you can't come in or you may not be financially able to come in and I want all the resources that are out there that are free available so that you're able to help yourself and to have the health and peace that I think everybody deserves. So have a wonderful Friday and I will talk to you on Monday for Mindful Monday. Goodbye.